Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. Before we proceed to the chemical properties of uh, Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes, I think we should first uh, devote some time to solving the in-text questions that are related to the topics that we've covered. So I'm going to do three in-text questions in this video that is 10.2, 10.3 and 10.4. And in the next video, I'll be doing 10.5 and 10.6 before we move on to the chemical properties. Right now, let us start. This is question 10.2. It is your in-text question. The question is, why is sulfuric acid not used during the reaction of alcohols with potassium iodide? Now, which is the portion in the chapter to which it is referring? I've written that part. It is referred to page 286, where there's one sentence uh, that is written that good yields of alkyl iodides can be obtained by heating alcohols with sodium iodide or potassium iodide in 95% of phosphoric acid. So now the question that they've asked you is that why is sulfuric acid not used in place of phosphoric acid? What is the difference between phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid in its action? Sulfuric acid is a highly oxidizing acid and phosphoric acid on the other hand is non-oxidizing. It is this basic difference because of which we cannot use sulfuric acid when we are carrying out this reaction. And instead we need to use a non-oxidizing acid. Well then, so what happens when you add H2SO4 to this uh, solution? If you add an oxidizing acid like H2SO4 to the solution, the H2SO4 reacts with potassium iodide and it oxidizes it to hydrogen iodide and then further oxidizes it into iodine. So let us see what the reaction is. You have two H2SO4 which reacts with two Ki and results in the formation of two KHSO4 plus twice Hi. Now the Hi twice Hi further reacts with H2SO4 and results in the formation of I2 plus SO2 plus H2O. As a result of which, this iodine that is present cannot replace the OH group of the alcohol and therefore the, it cannot be used to prepare the uh, haloalkane or that is the iodoalkane from the alcohol. So that's the reason why we cannot use an oxidizing acid like H2SO4. We need to use a non-oxidizing acid on the other hand, which is phosphoric acid. So now let us do the next question. All right. So now this is question 10.3. It is your in-text question. The question reads, write the structures of different dihalogen derivatives of propane. What is propane? Propane is CH3. CH2, CH3. This is propane. Now you need dihalogen derivatives. Let us say you're adding bromine or uh, different dihalogen. Yeah, bromine or you could take it as X. The halogen atom, they have, they have to be two halogen atoms. So two of the hydrogens in these have to be replaced by the halogen atom. So what are the different isomers that can be prepared on the basis of this? Let us see. What are the different hydrogens available first of all? Since it is di-substituted, you would have the option of substituting two hydrogens and on the basis of that you will get the various isomers. So let us take the first case. Let us take the first carbon and both the halogens to be attached to the first carbon. So we will say C, two of its hydrogens are, uh, can, uh, let us say we are taking bromine or let us take chlorine. Chlorine, you have CH2 and CH3. This is one possible isomer. So this is the first isomer. Second isomer, let us take the second carbon which has been substituted by the two halogen atoms or the two chlorines. So what would the name of this be? This would be 1,1-dichloropropane. Okay. Now, Let's go to the second carbon then. CH3 remains here. This carbon has one chlorine here and one chlorine here and this is CH3. So what is the name of this? This would be 2, 2, there should be a hyphen here, di, the D should be capital. Because whenever you start a 
and I the AC name it always starts with a capital so di chloro propane right that would be the name of this second isomer so let's now take the two chlorines if we put the two chlorines on the third carbon it would be nothing but the first carbon because we start counting from this direction so that's not different so that's not different so let us have uh, let us now write down C H uh, use two different carbon atoms so CH2 one chlorine attaches itself here C and let's have H one chlorine attaching itself here CH3 so how would you name this this would be one two dichloropropane right and now what is the fourth option if I put the second and the third again I it is the same isomer only you've been you, you'll start counting from this direction and the name also a name would be the same that is it would be one two dichloropropane so the next isomer that you can have is a one three substitution so let's have it CH2 Cl CH CH2 Cl and here you will have a CH2 right so I can put the Cl here instead so it looks a little more symmetrical so do you see this the Cl here and the Cl attached to the carbon here. So what would the name of this be? This would be 1,3-dichloropropane. So these are the maximum number of isomers that you can prepare from uh, propane. Maximum number of dihalogen derivatives that you can get from propane. So that was question 10.3. Let us now do the last question for this video. That is question 10.4. Give me a moment. So now this is question 10.4. The question reads, among the isomeric alkanes of molecular formula C5H12, identify the one that on photochemical chlorination yields a single monochloride. You have to see a photochemical substitution of chlorine. One of the hydrogens of the uh, isomer of pentane has to uh, take its place. So we have to find out which one, which isomer of pentane yields a single monochloride? Which isomer of pentane yields three isomeric? It would give us three isomeric monochlorides. And which one of those would give us four isomeric monochlorides? This is such an interesting question. It is not only interesting in terms of chlorination, it is interesting in terms of understanding isomers. You are using isomers to find out which further isomers of the monosubstituted product can you get. In order to get, first of all, we must know the isomers of pentane. Pentane, you can have a straight chain isomer, that is uh, normal pentane. So CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. This is normal pentane. So let's write one isomer, make a branch of it. So you'll get CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, CH3. This is 2-methylbutane, is also an isomer of pentane. And then you could have the third isomer that you could have would have two branches. So you could have one with two branches that is CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH3. These are the different isomers of pentane that you get. Now the question says that among the isomeric alkanes of molecular formula, or among the isomers of pentane in other words, you have to identify the one that on photochemical chlorination will yield only a single monochloride. It will only give you one monochloride, there would be no isomers. Which out of these isomers will give you only, a, only one monochloride? Remember, for any uh, compound to give us isomers further of the monosubstituted chlorine, we must have different types of hydrogens that 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 chlorine can substitute. If you want only one monochloride, it means all the hydrogens is this in this compound should be identical in position. Whatever, whichever hydrogen it substitutes, the name of the monochloride should be the same. And that is possible in this compound. That is 2,2-dichloropropane, uh, sorry, 2,2-dimethylpropane or neopentane. This isomer has only one kind of hydrogens. Take a look. There are three hydrogens on every carbon. The central carbon does not have any hydrogen. 
and all of these are methyl groups all four of them and if uh, the chlorine takes the place of any of these hydrogens all of these hydrogens are identical so you will get only one monochloride so the answer for the first part would be a single monochloride the first part would be it would be neopentane would give you only one monochloride. And what would the formula of neopentane be? It would be CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH3. Right? And if you substitute any one of these, the product that you would get on chlorination in the presence of light would be CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH2, CL. Right? And this CH2Cl could be on any side, any one of these would give you identical compounds. The second one says that which out of these three isomers is going to give you three isomeric monochlorides? Now which of these has got three different kinds of uh, hydrogens? Look here. The second one, how many types of hydrogens does it have? First let us identify. And the next one says four different uh, isomeric monochloride. So we have to see out of these, which one, out of these two now, which one has four different kinds of hydrogens and which has three different kinds of hydrogens. Let's take this one first. This has one, two of the hydrogens are terminal carbons. Two of the carbons are terminal carbons. So two of the hydrogens are identical. Then you could have one chloric, that is one, one of the positions is this one. The second is the second, this, this hydrogen. This is the third hydrogen, right? That is, you can have one substitution, substitution at first carbon, second carbon, third carbon. If you come to the fourth, it is nothing but the second from that side. So it means that this isomer will give you three different kinds of further isomers of monosubstituted chlorine product. And what about this? This has got how many types of uh, hydrogens? Let us see. One is this carbon, CH3, this is one. This is two, this is three and this is four you'll get four different uh, products out of this you'll get four different isomers so you can see why would you get four different isomers because there is one methyl group here you can treat this as the methyl or this as the methyl in if one of these is being substituted then so this one has got four options so this is four so what does this say which one has three isomeric monochlorides this one that is normal pentane will have three isomeric monochlorides and let us see which would, which would those be you will have CH3 second it would be normal the answer would be normal pentane and pentane or just pentane and what are the different isomers that you would get let us first substitute the terminal carbon so CH2 Cl CH2 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 CH3 that is one let us substitute the second carbon now. So you'll get CH3, CH, Cl, CH2, CH2, CH3. And the third option that you would get it would be a third substitution. So you'll get CH3, CH2, CH, Cl, CH2, CH3. So these are the different three isomeric monochloro uh, substituted products that you can get from this isomer. And the next is four isomeric monochlorides are obtained from this. So what would those be? So we'll say for the third one, the answer is uh, two methyl butane, two methyl butane or isopentane butane. Two methyl butane is the one that would give you four different isomers. So let us make those four different isomers that you would obtain. You'd obtain, let us first substitute this carbon, CH2Cl, CH2, CH, CH3, CH3. So you'll get this as uh, this is uh, three methyl, or rather we'd say one chloro, three methyl butane, because we took name it alphabetically. One chloro, three methyl butane. And what would the other isomers be? The others would be, let us now substitute the second carbon. So you'll get CH3, CH, Cl, CH, CH3, CH3. So this is the second option that is possible. The third option would be to substitute this hydrogen. So let's write that 
CH3, CH2, C, Cl, CH3, CH3. This is the third product. And the fourth product would be, fourth isomer would be one of these two. So you'll get CH3, CH2, C, CH3, oh, this would be CH, sorry, CH, and this would be CH2, CH. So if you write the names of these, how are these different? This is, I told you, one chloro, three methyl butane, right? This would be, this would be two chloro, three methyl butane, right? This would be two, two chloro, two methyl butane. And this one would be one chloro, two methyl butane. So these are the various isomeric forms that you would get. So with this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.